and welcome back to The Buzz. I'm Bailey Barnes. Today I'm with Dr. Don Dust of the Pediatric Eye Consultants of North Florida. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, so tell me a little bit, uh, why did you choose the pediatric route? So I chose, I actually did not want to go into pediatrics. Ah. So it was actually an interesting turn of events. Um, so when you go through medical school, you kind of make a branch of whether you're going to go medicine or whether you're going to go surgery, and then there are surgical subspecialties among the surgery route, mm -hmm. of which ophthalmology is one. And I actually was thinking of being a glaucoma specialist or actually going into oculoplastics. Um, and I walked into my first rotation of pediatrics and walked up to my mentor and told him I was going to go into glaucoma. And he said he was very sorry to hear that. <laughs> and I went back two weeks later and I said, no, this is, this is what I want to do. And it's a very simple reason. I have a lot of fun. It's mm -hmm. really, really fun. I mean, we play on the floor. We have a ton of fun with our kids. And um, I really debated and I had a hard time deciding what subspecialty because some of the other subspecialties within ophthalmology are a little more glamorous, mm -hmm. have a little bit, you know, LASIK surgeon or a retinal surgeon and things like that. And I remember talking to my mom and asking her saying, well, you know, these, these other subspecialties are just a little bit m more glamorous mm -hmm. and more hype. And, you know, the pediatric ophthalmologist is kind of the redheaded stepchild of all of ophthalmology. Uh -huh. we, you know, we get no respect at all. And, and she said, well, why, do you, why would you go into peds? You know, what, what, what is it about it? And I said, I don't know, I just have a lot of fun. And she looked at me and she goes, why the heck wouldn't you not want to do something that you have a lot of fun with every day? Exactly. And it really, it's true. I mean, if you love what you do, every day is easy. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what happens or what hits the van. If you really enjoy your job, it makes a really, really big difference in your day. Um, and I'm really glad I chose it. I'm, I am a big nerd when it comes to what I do. I get excited about <laughs> cases. I have fun and I, I know my patients. Mm -hmm. I know what they're doing. I know where they're going to camp. I know what they're, you know, what schools they go to. And I like that part of being a doctor. Um, there's, you know, that part of medicine for me was part of why I went into medicine and really being able to ha know your patients is something special and cool. Great. Um, so I know that like um, pediatric uh, ophthalmologists, they're, it's a little different the way they practice than other ones. Um, so what's special about your practice? So, well, <laughs> my particular practice mm -hmm. is actually really unique, but in general, most pediatric ophthalmologists, there are not very many of us. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you realize there's maybe eight to 900 pediatric ophthalmologists in the country. Oh, wow. So there are many areas that don't have access to a pediatric ophthalmologist. Mm -hmm. My year of fellowship, so I, when you finish general ophthalmology, you do a year of additional fellowship in pediatrics, and my year there were only 12 of us in the country who went into pediatrics. So if you're only putting out 10 or 12 people a year, yeah. there are not very many of you. And most do not go into practice by themselves. Um, most pediatric ophthalmologists join a, a group setting. So, you know, a big eye group that has a retina doctor and a general ophthalmologist and a glaucoma specialist will also bring in a pediatric specialist, mm -hmm. and they'll basically see the kids in the practice. Um, that's one way, and then the other way would be to be involved with a like a pediatric hospital setting or a pediatric clinic setting where you're in a pediatric world and you happen to be the eye doctor there. Mm -hmm. And so, and I've done that before, but I just a year and a half ago decided to break away and do something really unique and start a private setting where it's all pediatric ophthalmology um, in that private setting all by myself. So I'm the only doctor in my practice. Oh, wow. It's just me. Mm -hmm. um, I built it myself. Mm -hmm. I took a big, big, huge space that was a big IT space and created the whole thing. Um, and so we're the only ones in all of Northeast Florida and maybe even all of the country who's, who have actually done this. Um, it's kind of akin to the first pediatric dentist who just decided to do pediatric dentistry. Mm -hmm. I mean, before that, did, was there a pediatric dentist, dentist, you know, kind of gathering? No. And so this is kind of really unique. I wanted to, I wanted to do something special, um, something different. And I think my focus was, I really feel that medicine is changing a lot over the last, you know, 10, 20 years. I think I grew up, I had a pediatrician who, it was little mom and pop place. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember my pediatrician, he knew us. He, he showed up at the hospital when my sister got sick. And oh, wow. I mean, he knew our family and we were really close. And then things have kind of changed into these big conglomerate medical practices like Mayo and like, mm -hmm. you know, where it's convenient because you can go to one place and get all the subspecialties. But I think you lose some of that personal touch. And Definitely. I think I'm seeing a lot of patients really want to go back to a little bit of that mom and pop. And so I wanted to create a place where you have that mom and pop feel, um, but you still have great care. Mm -hmm. And that was the attraction for the big places is that, was, you know, Mayo Clinic would be 
the best doctors in the country or something, but take the skills I have and the expertise I have and then put it back in that close environment where you know your patients and your patients know you and they feel comfortable and they can get access to you any time of day. Um, That's fantastic. And so, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of the best of both worlds. So then um, with, I, um, sorry, with uh, you guys helping like the kids and whatnot, besides the personal service that you guys offer, mm -hmm. uh, what other things, uh, special services do you like give kids when they come in to keep them comfortable? Um, <laughs> so we are mm -hmm. peds, very peds friendly. So mm -hmm. everything from the fish tanks to actually the whole office is wireless. So there's no paper but everything is all high tech. So we've got three 80 inch TVs in the waiting room. One has mm -hmm. Xbox on it, one's got Disney movies, one's got ESPN. We've got iPads all built into the wall oh, so cool. that kids can play on the iPads. We've got, as I said, the Xbox. Um, all of, the whole, the whole place is all wireless and all iPad electronic medical record. And so we keep them very, very entertained. Um, one of the other things that we feel really strongly about is making kids really comfortable mm -hmm. in that setting. And so my staff, all my staff are pediatric ophthalmology trained. Uh, my technicians have done kids for the last, you know, 10, 20 years. And so we are very patient with the kids. We see a lot of developmentally delayed kids, a mm -hmm. lot of autistic kids. We are 150% comfortable with that. Kids are not scared. And we don't, we are very aware of those sorts of children and their and their issues. So we don't, scare them, we don't jump up on them, mm -hmm. we, we I do things in my office, our rooms, um, our, my rooms are 20 feet long, so we have these huge rooms, part of that is because you get, a, there are certain things that you need a child to fixate at 20 feet in mm -hmm. order to see, but it aids that families come in, other siblings can come in, strollers can come in, there's so much room in these, in, in the actual uh, exam rooms, and all of our equipment is really portable, so if a kid does not want to get in the chair, kid does not get in the chair, I can Great. take my equipment and go in the corner, they can sit with dad. I have done exams with kids sitting Indian style in the corner on their dad's lap. That's fine, you know, uh, we, mm -hmm. we work around them. You know, we do a lot of watching them play in a room before I even address them, you know, watching what they're doing. And I can make diagnoses just watching them go around and watching what their eyes are doing while I'm talking to the mom and getting them comfortable in the room. So I think part of, that's very important in a pediatric world, do you really, Kids are not just small adults. They okay. are very, very unique. And my, my husband's actually an adult ophthalmologist mm -hmm. and has his own practice. And when I was thinking of going out on my own, he said, oh, we'll just put you on, you know, we'll give you a room. You can come join our big group, like most, most ophthalm pediatric ophthalmologists. I said, I don't want to be in, in your <laughs> office. You of guys have not. a bunch of old people, right? <laughs> so, and I said, I can't, I can't work there. I need, I need toys. I need fish. I need all these, you know. <laughs> He's like, oh, come on. You can, you can do it with this. You know, you don't need all that stuff. I'm, and you do. You really, really mm -hmm. do. It really makes a huge difference. And I'll tell you, so many parents have come in and commented that, wow, this is, this is different. This is really cool that my kids are totally comfortable. Actually, they laugh. They say their kids don't want to leave the waiting room. And <laughs> so we have this joke that we should do like kids by the hour. You know, doctor on site, leave your children in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they, they um, I think we do really cater toward the children. I mean, it is, it, we like to make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think it actually helps us get a better exam. The kids screaming in the corner, you're never going to be able to help them because they're not cooperating. So, you know, keeping them comfortable, putting them in an environment where they don't feel scared and they're, they're much more likely to show you what you need to see mm -hmm. in order to help them so um what's like the most common eye problem with uh, pediatrics so <laughs> i see patients everywhere from zero on and in fact i because i can i make my own rules um i've actually determined that pediatrics for me would be zero to 26. Mm -hmm. so i will see comprehensive pediatric ophthalmology anywhere from age zero up to 26 years old great i think a lot of you know 20s 18 you know the teens a lot of them are still under their parents' insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of them aren't really ready to go into an adult setting. And so it's nice to have that little extra couple of years, especially, again, some of the, you know, some of the Down syndrome kids. We're seeing a lot of developmentally delayed kids have, you know, live longer mm -hmm. and be active. And so you get these 20-year-olds or late 20-year-olds that are Down syndrome or autistic and they're not comfortable in an adult world. So I will do comprehensive pediatric ophthalmology meaning anything, meaning you need glasses or you had a tear, you know, a teary eye or mm -hmm. something, anything from that simple to, you know, one week old baby cataract surgery. Aww. So we, we will do the gamut. Um, I do do pediatric cataracts. I do do pediatric glaucoma. Mm -hmm. um, the most common thing we see is amblyopia. So amblyopia is when 
a child doesn't learn to see 2020. So mm -hmm. the, a child's brain is actually not developed when they're born. So you don't know how to see when you're born. So most people don't know that, that you actually do not have any vision when you're born and your occipital lobe is actually blank. So you have no neurons in your brain that know how to see. Hmm. You have to learn it. So there are several conditions where you may not learn to see 2020, including if you have you know, a large prescription in one eye or a large prescription in both eyes or um, if one eye is wandering. So those are the most common things that we see are children who have amblyopia from a prescription point of view or who have a crossed eye or a wandering eye. So okay. most, of my, most of my clinic, a lot of my clinic is amblyopia. Lot, all, almost all of my surgeries are surgical for strabismus, which is a misaligned eye, crossed or wandering. Got it. Um, so then where are you guys located? So we're um, North Punta Vedra Beach. Okay. We are um, right near JTB, just south of JTB and A1A. And then are you guys still looking for new um, clients as well? Absolutely. Or? We um, will take, we take all insurance, but we also take self-insured. We take out-of-pocket. Um, I actually had joined a practice management group that mm -hmm. does all of my negotiation rates. So even though I'm a single, a single physician, I don't have to worry about negotiating that. So it allows us to take all the commercial um, insurances, but I also actually also take Medicaid. Um, and Medicare for the, some of the adults that I do see subspecialized. Um, so it allows me to take care of anybody who needs me and not have to really um, mm -hmm. limit, limit my clientele. And then if someone wanted to reach out to you to become a new client, how yep. would they do that? So phone or email, our website is uh, www.kidseyesjacks.com. Great. So thank you so much for mm -hmm. being here today. Great. And we'll see you next time on The Buzz.